brought to you by wellnessplus.tv and made possible by the generous donations of Psyche Truth Patreon supporters. Hey everybody, we wanted to go over some things you can do today to help you with your yoga practice, especially if you're a beginner getting started. People will have a tendency to get tight through their hips and hamstrings, also sometimes have problems with their hands and wrists. We're going to show you how to use the yoga body massage balls today to be able to work on yourself. These are made of eco-friendly rubber. We'd really like to thank Yoga Body for sponsoring this video today. We're going to show you how to use these to relieve some of that tension in your hips and gluteals, I think, to start with. Do you want to grab one of these, Karina? If you don't have Yoga Body massage balls at home, you could use a tennis ball or maybe a lacrosse ball. Based on my limited experience using these, they're a little bit larger. I find them to be a little bit more firm than a tennis ball but not quite as sharp as a lacrosse ball. I think they're just the right texture and consistency, especially to be able to work in your gluteals. So if you have a tennis ball at home, you might wanna start with that as a softer option, but we're gonna use this in the gluteals. Anything around what you would consider like the bony knob on your hip over here is something you can press into as long as it's fleshy and around. If you press on bone itself, not so good. You wanna go ahead and start, Karina? You can pick a side. You don't wanna press on your tailbone. You don't wanna press on your femur itself or this little bony knob called the greater trochanter. But otherwise, you can lift yourself, move around. You can sit like I am. Ooh. And if you want to make it a little bit easier, maybe you don't wanna keep your body up, I'll scoot off of the mat. Can you actually lay down on your back, Karina? There we go. And from there, probably I think on that side, you just kind of roll your hips towards me, and then you should be able to find a good soft spot in the gluteals when you put weight down. There you go. You can lift the pelvis and roll around. You can roll the leg out to the side. It also depends on just how much pressure you can take. As soon as she lifts, she gives me this breath. It can be very, very intense. I don't want you to go so fast that it's painful. We want you to do this slowly at your own pace. You're trying to work with your own sort of myofascial release. You're just trying to get the tissue to relax and unwind there. And also, if you've been practicing recently, it may mean that you're a little sore. It's completely fine to go slow. If anything, I think that's actually an improvement in your yoga practice and when you're using yoga body massage balls, you want to go slow to allow the tissue to unwind and release. It may feel intense. I wouldn't want it to feel painful. Painful means you contract, which is the opposite of what we're trying to do in yoga. In yoga, typically, we're trying to get muscles to release and unwind. When we do have muscles contract, it's to create stability across a joint so we can support ourselves. This is really great for the hamstrings and I think primarily the gluteals. If you decide to use the yoga body massage ball into the hamstrings, you can see how she placed it along. And then slowly, Karina, can you come closer to your ischial tuberosity? Just a little bit, there you go. More people are gonna have problems toward their tuchus than they are towards their knee, typically. And also, the muscle here is a little bit thinner, so it's sometimes easier to apply pressure there. Just like the gluteals, you want to go slow, take your time, feel your way around. The other component that comes out of using these, the way that Karina is supporting her body, she's actually able to work on her opposite hip, her leg strength, her shoulders, because she's supporting herself. It's completely fine to roll gently up and down or across muscle fibers, cross fiber friction. You want hurts so good. Hurts so good. It's a perfect way to describe the sensation we're going for. Karina also made me aware of the fact that these are made of eco-friendly natural rubber. So a green choice in massage tools. There we go. Are you killing your hamstrings, Karina? It feels really good. Feels good. good. <laughs> okay. 
It actually doesn't hurt at all. It just feels good. Feel free to roll around to be able to apply pressure. If you find a spot that feels exquisitely tender, that hurts so good, feel free to also hang out in the spot. Don't feel like you have to rush off of it. Much like a yoga pose, as you're breathing into it, you can slowly get tissue to relax, release, and unwind. If you desire to move on into the calves, instead of just putting the yoga body massage ball straight down on the mat, I think we're gonna try using a block and see if that'll make it a bit easier to reach. Which way do you, would you like to turn it? Try it from there. There you go. Ooh. That one hurts so good. <laughs> <laughs> we found your tight area. And again, down towards the ankle, the muscle tapers can be a little bit more intense. I tend to like when people are, when they're starting in the big, broad section of the calves, just to get a feel first before you give it more nuance and something a little bit more extreme. It's also a matter of when you find something, Karina is moving around, but it's totally fine to just put the foot and leg in place and let it sit and hang out. From there, instead of moving your knee, Karina, if you find a good spot and just sit for a second, is that too much? Okay. Now very slowly, without moving the rest of your leg, can you move at the ankle? Woo. Yeah. Because that's accessing all of those muscles right in the calf. Soleus, the gastrocnemius primarily. Maybe a little bit of tibialis posterior if you get deep enough. And then she's adding nuance by using the thigh as well. Intense is fine. Pain is not. You go slow. You can switch from leg to leg. You want to be able to use that hurt so good that the yoga body massage balls create to be able to increase awareness of what are you stretching when you do a downward facing dog? What are you strengthening what's become tight? Soft tissue, muscles being used in various poses. And no more than that, right? It was way more intense in the calves. Yeah. yeah. We're going to have Karina face back this way, so her back is to the camera. We want to be able to work on the shoulders, and part of working on the shoulders is working on the shoulder blade. And the muscles on the shoulder blade, infraspinatus, means it's below the spine of the scapula, infra, like infrared, below the red on the spectrum. This muscle right in here, in addition to teres major and minor as you go towards the armpit, it's a little bit easier to access in the posterior. So she's gonna wind up laying on her back and trying to put pressure right into here and then engage a little bit of movement since this is the rotator cuff. Since we've got this right here, do you feel that right there, Karina? Mm -hmm. can, you, can you lift this arm like out and forward? Do you feel that? Mm -hmm. How, yeah. So anything that's controlling the movement of the humerus is part of that rotator cuff. It's engaging that when she drives, when she types. I'm gonna go ahead and back off and see if when she lays on her back, she can place the ball right in the back of the shoulder blade. And just like any other spot, you're gonna to have to move, roll around just a little bit, see where you find it. Oof, Oof too much? That's good. There we go. Oof. Now, once we get you in a position where you found something that you wanna hang out in, Karina, does your arm feel fine being down on the ground like that? Or would you prefer it be up a little bit? Ooh, it's a lot more intense. <laughs> okay. And you can choose exactly where you want it to go. What I wanted to see is this. Once you pick a spot, when I say up, meaning towards the head or down towards the feet. What do you think there? What's it, it all it all hurts okay. so good. <laughs> so here but here's what I want to do. When you when you bring it down, can you bring it on the block? How's is that better? Yes. Now can you extend the arm? And we'll give you a second. There we go. 
So the shoulder position would be a little bit different if she was straight down on the ground. If you don't have blocks, you could use blankets or towels rolled up to be able to do this. We're trying to put her in a position where it was intense, but not painful. If she continues moving around, that's often very intense for people. We're putting in her position where she can breathe. Yoke, uniting the breath with the body to be able to apply pressure with the yoga body massage ball in a way that's comfortable for her to get that tissue to release and unwind. She's sending a great stimulus into her nervous system and then getting her nervous system res to respond with relaxation because she's safe, she's serene, she's secure. When she has her arm lifted and she's moving rapidly up and down, it was intense. It was intense enough that she couldn't really hang out in a spot. It's just like when you do a yoga pose and you go in so deeply that you couldn't hang out there. The goal is to make the pose comfortable, easy, relaxed. You can use props, balls, bolsters, self-massage to be able to help you in your practice so that when you're doing active poses, you can more rapidly get into a comfortable position and deal with the appropriate muscle length. A lot of people in yoga focus on flexibility, but it's also a matter of strength and being able to stabilize across a joint to provide support in the pose. If things feel painful, back out, make it less. Little change there. Ooh. Now, I'm gonna change this one for you, Karina, and see if this helps. If we block this guy up this way, lift your arm a little bit. Can you rest there? Is that too high? Oh, that feels great. There we go. Same basic idea. If she had her hand further back, it would increase the turn of her humerus, which is where those rotator cuff muscles, infraspinatus, teres major and minor, are wrapping into the head of the humerus, the head of the shoulder joint. It decreases the pressure. I think of it as positional release. That's a term that's sometimes used in massage circles, but a lot of these concepts can be recycled from massage and yoga because we're dealing with the same physiological structures. A body. Being able to create safe space where she can relax into the pose I think is more beneficial than just active use of muscles constantly. I also think it brings a heightened degree of awareness to the degree of myofascial release that's coming out of the nervous system. The nervous system creating space so that your muscle fibers go, oh, it's safe. I can lengthen here. I can apply pressure here without it being painful. BKS Yengar, I think, described it as awakening the student's intelligence. What I think he was saying there is he's getting the person's nervous system to relax, release, and unwind. In addition, you could use the yoga body massage balls almost anywhere you're dealing with soft tissue. Even though we focus on hamstrings, gluteals, back of the shoulder blade, it's an easy way to work on soft tissue almost anywhere on the body. I'm gonna grab the blocks here for Karina to have her slowly lift out. I wanna see if she can comfortably move the yoga body massage ball right into the posterior of her neck. She could go closer to the occiput, meaning the base of the skull. She could go more towards the top of the neck. She has her head turned towards me, and then she can slowly roll it back to center too much? That no, feels really good. Feels good, okay. <laughs> Would you like to try both sides at the same time? Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna place the other in position. We're gonna see if we can get both of these right around maybe the base of her skull. We wanna make sure they don't roll out of the way. But she may be able to stack there. How's that? There, <laughs> rolling away. Rolling a little, a little bit. bit, yeah. Oh, you know what? Down a little bit. Ooh. There you go. When she adjusted that and said she wanted it a bit down, 
part of the nuance is when you're using a massage tool, if you, one, if you were using a tennis ball, it's a different size. It also doesn't say anything about the size of your body and your neck. Karina has a big long neck. It's true. Very feminine, very beautiful neck other people very short squat it depends on the size of your body and how you make the yoga body massage ball fit what you're doing if you wanted to use just one it's completely fine if you felt like one was rolling out of the way you could always take maybe a towel and wrap it around so that the towel forms a little bit of a barrier so it doesn't roll and she gave me a big breath when she rolled onto her left side Posterior of the neck is fine. You don't really want to go into the side and you certainly don't want to go into the front. I know that seems like common sense, but it's just for your own safety. You don't want to go near the carotid artery. The posterior of the neck is usually safe for most people, even if you've had maybe a cervical fusion. As long as you've healed from surgery, I think it's fairly safe to apply pressure in the posterior of the neck, working through trapezius, the splenius groups of muscles maybe a little bit of levator scapula. And wherever you are, you always want to breathe. It's gonna help you relax, release, and unwind more rapidly. After having worked on the neck, we're gonna have Karina sit up. So we're gonna go ahead and try to have her work through her forearm, especially her forearm extensors. She can grab one of the yoga body massage balls and go over to the wall. We're gonna use the wall to pin the yoga body massage ball against the wall and into the forearm extensors. So not the inside of the arm, but the extensors. Usually this three quarters of the way up the forearm. She's going to be able to lean into that. She can actually use her other arm to reinforce if she'd like. And then slowly she can start to move the hand and wrist to lengthen and shorten within what she can handle. <laughs> it can be very intense. Lots of people who are doing yoga and especially I think downward facing dog pose develop problems with their hands and wrist where it feels like the wrist is compacted. The forearm flexors and extensors crossed, cross that junction at the wrist and cause in many instances some of that referred pain that we've seen. So as she works through that comfortably <laughs> and slowly, we're going to talk about hand and wrist position, even from a seated position to talk about how you're going to hold your hands in downward facing dog pose. A lot of people are, I think, compromising their wrists. And these are very small, delicate structures. We want to be able to give ourselves time to build up strength and being able to use the yoga body massage balls to release tension in the forearms is going to greatly speed up the process of us doing downward facing dog comfortably. Ooh, Tender, right? Really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Karina worked on her left forearm. Before we have her work on her right, or to give us some comparison, I want to be able to have her take the yoga body massage ball. You can hand it to me. I want you to sit facing the wall. And then comfortably, I want you to put your arms on the wall like you were doing downward facing dog pose. Now she has her shoulders and her hands at about the same height. So she's getting some bend right here at the wrist. What I want is more like downward facing dog. She would have the hands a little higher up. Do you see how it decreases the angle? Now, how does that feel, Karina? More comfortable. <laughs> now, when you, when you lean in or press in and play with lifts and push and pull, do you notice a difference between the arms having used the yoga body massage ball on one side? Yeah. <laughs> what does it feel like? Um, my left arm feels stronger. Mm -hmm. Stronger. It's possibly because she's released tissue 
And from a released position, that tissue is able to contract and provide more support. What I see a lot of people do in downward facing dog, and I wanted to bring this up, is they'll completely flatten their palm. I don't want you to do that. I want you to give me a little bit of arch. Think of your hands as kind of like your feet and just a little bit of arch. And I want you to stack the carpals, the hand bones in a way that feels more comfortable on your wrist. How does it feel when you do that? If you have a problem with downward facing dog pose, I will sometimes have people stand and do the equivalent of this pose where I call it half downward facing dog because they're just focusing on the upper body. If you, you wanted an even lazier version, that would be the seated version that would allow you to work on the hands and wrists. It's much more difficult to form that arch when you're doing the full expression of downward facing dog, but we've used some of the awareness built with the yoga body massage ball to be able to give nuance to a yoga pose. Thank you so much for working with us today. I really appreciate your time and attention. And a special thanks to Yoga Body for providing our massage balls today and sponsoring this video. If there's anything else that you would like us to cover, or if you're having problems in your yoga practice that you have questions about, please comment down below. We're happy to chat with you and produce more video to help you in your growing yoga practice. This is day one of my 30 day yoga challenge. We're gonna progress through some intermediate and advanced postures and just address overall wellness and stress reduction. Be proud of yourself.